just i guess start when we start joe with the show buddy oh yeah it's on, our, it's on. we're live yeah, we're oh uh, no. I, okay all right yeah. here we go yeah all right we are we live Hey guys, welcome to Cancel This, CancelThisShow.com. I'm Vic Faust. Lizzie Sparks alongside Projo in the house as well. I know people are starting to come on in right now. So um, for those who are there, just a couple. That's why I was, it's almost like a show before the show. This is the show before the show. That's in the live aspect of it so we could get in since we were starting a little bit later today. Um, go ahead, please like, subscribe, share the show, post it so people know that we are on. I'll talk about it uh, in just a second. I want to make sure we have everybody there. But for those people who were here, you can spread the news too. Uh, AT&T sucks. They flat out effing suck. I hate the company. I hate the representatives. I hate their call center somewhere in Mumbai. Um, I hate it all. So there you go. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. why we were late. Uh, AT and T sucks. They have I said that AT and T sucks. AT and T yet? sucks, and and we're screwed because AT we have to yes. use AT and T. I I I've so many times I was like, use Gateway Fiber or use Spectrum, and you're like, you guys, we can't because this building is only an AT and T building, and they suck. They do suck. A oh my God, do they suck? And what's interesting is is that we were ahead of this and an issue that happened with technical and then everybody yes. deals with everybody we were, has tech we were problems. literally working on this for two hours last night told everything yeah. was fine mm -hmm. literally i was told everything was fine of course and then today <laughs> we're on late and they cost us a uh, little show before the show it's and all right the the worst part about it here's the thing the people who i were dealing with last night in the united states were, mm -hmm. were, were, were decent yeah they were good, but, and I only said they were great then, but they told me everything was taken care of. So that makes them only decent now. That's right. They're not great. <laughs> but these international call centers, and we've all dealt with them at some point or another, are are terrible. They don't uh, speak English. Tom, right? Tommy says AT&T communists. Connie says Ugh, this. They suck. They do suck. Um, and we're, our hands are tied having them. They've given us so many problems. But here's the thing. I pay a lot of money. Yeah, you do. We pay a lot. I mean, we're paying... Uh, close to 200 bucks a month for fiber here yeah there it's in absolutely insane it really is. for the service that you get mm -hmm. and we all deal with that well that that's my little my diatribe right now that's all right <laughs> diatribe like, away you you feel because here's the thing you just get beat down you're like oh my god i dealt with this for two hours last night uh -huh. i paid a ton of money for their top service and then it's nowhere to be found. Of course not. And um, anyway, that's where it is. Cancel this. Cancel the show dot com. Um, do I do I seem very, very angry? Yes, you seem angry, but rightly so, Vic. I mean, Joe and I sit there and saw what you were having to deal with. It was truly no mm. fault of the show. Mm. And anytime there's tech dif tech difficulties, you've tried to be quiet about the fact that it's it's been AT and T. You know, there's been you know few few people <laughs> reporting us and stuff. But for the most part, it's just AT and T, and they suck, and we have no option because of the building that we're in because it's only an AT and T. We building. love the building we're in. We do. We love it, but they only have well, AT and T uh, here, so that's oh what we have my to have. God, is it crazy? Oh, it really is. It um, really is. Anyway, we're glad to be here. Um, it's, I, I think the whole thing that, that goes down when you start to look at tech, here's the thing with company. It's not like, and then when you're talking to an international call center, yeah. then when I go back and I'm like, okay, you guys are going to, you, you, I'm going to have a massive credit for what you guys just did. You would hope so. Uh, I, Do you think just, you really will I have just a credit? Don't, I don't know who to go talk to. Tanya says AT&T has gone way downhill they because really they're owned have. by China. Yeah, they're owned by somebody that doesn't uh, speak English, that's for sure. I love the chat line. This is cancel this cancel the show.com here, of course, Monday through Friday, 8 to 10 a.m. Central. Uh, you can catch all of our content on our website, cancel the show.com. Vic Faust, Lizzie Sparks, Projo in the house. Ben says he had the choice between AT&T and Spectrum, and he says he went with Charter. Oh, I, for sure. <laughs> oh, for sure. For sure. Um, oh, oh yeah. Ch Charter, which is now Spectrum, is way better than AT&T. My mother-in-law, you know, speaking of AT&T, I don't think I told you this, Vic. My father-in-law dies, 
And she's had the same telephone number literally for, I don't know, 50, 60 years. And after he died, because there was a name change, they disconnected her phone. My poor 83-year-old mother-in-law had no phone for a week because they couldn't figure out how to get it back up because they had to change names. Who does that to a little widow, a little they old do. widow? God, they suck. They do. They do. They really do. Um, so anyway, just venting a little bit on that. Well, our, but our listeners needed to know the truth. It wasn't like there was some nefarious thing coming or it was the day after tax day or the government came and got us. It was AT&T, period. That was it. Yeah. They, they had a modem problem and wouldn't get us back up. Sarah says charter service is out all the time in her area. That can depend on your area. Yeah, that too. can be. I, I have it and it's never out. But. Uh, but we do say good morning to everybody. Hope everybody's uh, getting in. Be sure to like, subscribe, share the show. Let people know Please. that we are out there. Uh, coming up at 915, uh, David Gregory coming in, running for state Senate. Um, the super conservative lawyer. He has a lawsuit. He's already done an interview on it. Against Sam Page, St. Louis County Executive. Uh, you won't want to miss that. Coming up at 9.15. Great to talk with Dave, too. Plus, our resident attorney. So, we're grateful for that. Also, um, we got lots of Donald Trump to talk about today. Lots of Donald. Lots, lots, lots of Donald and everything. It, that's what also had me angry today, too. Um, it, just, I, it wouldn't be right if Joe Biden was being treated the way that Donald Trump is being That's treated. exactly right. It wouldn't be mm -hmm. right if Obama was being treated the way that Donald Trump, and seriously, it wouldn't, even though can't stand the guys. Yeah. Um, it's just flat out wrong what, what's happening. Um, we'll break some of that stuff mm -hmm. down too. Um, Marjorie Taylor Greene is holding her ground. She's still going after, still going after uh, Speaker Johnson on what's happening there. And uh, what I feel, and I know our attorney, or our company feels is the right thing. The Supreme court with a big time decision regarding reassignment surgery procedures for kids, Supreme court weighing in tough on that. So I'm grateful for that. Anyway, uh, if you have any other stories, if you have anything that's coming on, let us know any kind of things that we need to make sure that we're caught up with. Let us know, you know what we do here Monday through Friday, eight to 10 a.m. Central and all the time on our website, cancel the show.com. Um, for those of you who are just coming in, we started a little bit late today uh, to no fault of our own. Um, that was on AT&T. And I'm sorry if anybody works for AT&T or has somebody. And it's interesting because I finally let loose on the terrible company they are, the um, well below service that they offer, um, literally lying to you on mm -hmm. the phone. Everything you tried not to trash. Talk. Um but now it's like, oh, my God, everybody has had similar instances with yeah. AT&T. Mm -hmm. Gary says, ditched them 30 years ago, tried charging us 100 or hundreds of dollars for calling long distance just next door. Oh, yeah. Well, and you try to disconnect them. Years ago, we had them and we moved and we definitely didn't want AT&T where we moved. And so to make a long story short, they kept billing us month after month after month after month. And we had to fight them, fight them, fight them. So, yeah. Um, also, uh, com which an another situation is for people see, I mean, you have things that happen uh, in the St. Louis area. You just never know what's going to happen or what may happen. But Lizzie had a story yesterday. Her police were calling her early. St. Charles County. Thankfully, they nobody were. was hurt there. They were. But shots fired. Everybody's like, what the hell's going on? Um mm -hmm. Domestic situation, right? A guy grabbed a woman, put her in a car. Yeah, it was his wife. So, you know, before we usually, if there's something happening in our county, we can find out early because I have a lot of police officer friends. And long before it ever hit the news, they were saying that they had somebody barricaded. And, and it turned out it was a husband didn't like a court decision in St. Charles County. So he grabbed his wife and took her out to the parking garage and held her at gunpoint, held her as hostage. And so St. Charles County and city police had to call SWAT and all that, but everybody's fine today. No, that's everybody's the way it good. should be. Mm -hmm. um, boy, I tell you, the, the a lot stuff. of lockdowns, though. They had to lock down the schools and the hospital right there. Yeah, so. it's just what happens there. And then there was, you know, another situation didn't turn out as well in Tower Grove last night where you had a victim and the, uh, I guess you would call it the, the, the criminal both died in a shoot. Oh, I didn't hear that one. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's uh, so sad. No, just a lot of, you know, it's the weather has gotten warmer and a yes. lot more crazy stuff is happening all over the place. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Mike says, I heard he was hiding in her car waiting for her after the decision. Yeah, that's true. That's true. 
But what, man, I, I know emotion can get, but what the hell are you going to do in a car? Right. And now you're going to go to jail for yes. a very long time. And you have to think about that damn decision that didn't go your way. That's right. So he has that decision now. And, and St. Charles County doesn't play. So they're definitely going to put him away as the maximum amount that they can. What is interesting, we cover everything here, news, news, headlines, politics, things that are going on in your life, cancel culture, education, water cooler talk, free for all Fridays. But man, this AT&T thing was, I, I didn't realize so many people, this mm -hmm. is- It's bad news. Donna says, got a letter yesterday. My account was compromised um, in the breach a few weeks ago. They began free security steps on my account, but no offer of money credit to my account. Mm -hmm. uh, Alex says, never signed up for AT&T. They have been showing up to install internet past three months. Every time I tell the tech and I ask them to cancel, they say, okay, yet someone else shows up two weeks later. Yeah, that's the stuff they do. It I, really is. I, it's, I, oh, I've had it with AT. Uh, yeah, that's right. And that's the problem. This seems like a simple fix. We could just cancel and get somebody else, but we can't. So if you ever see we're having tech problems, it's AT&T, guys. That's what's going on. And we just tried not to say it because we don't want to trash anybody. Oh, I did. I'm out there. Today you did. Uh, from the chat line, Peter says, aren't there only two internet options? No, we have Spectrum more than that. Spectrum and AT&T, no. There's Gateway Fiber and what else is it? Like I3? There, I, it, there's something else too, I thought. Th there is. And um, and it would be that would be another great option because one of our listeners is one of the CEOs for it, but we can't have it. So, and he's one, one of the county councilmen too. Oh, is what is he again? He told us about Mike Elam, right? Yeah, Mike Elam. And um, it's, gosh, it's like I3 or something like that. He works there. He's he's one of the executives there. So I would love to honor him and have that here, but we can't. Oh, my God. Another thing. Alex says, hey, I can't cancel online because I never signed up in the first place. That is crazy. And at and showing up. Yeah, we're here to do your service. Yeah. And he never signed up, so he can't go online and do that. That's right. And Glenn saying a and t wasn't they the only provider that had the self service go down? Oh yeah, my God. That's, that's right. Think about it. They're having so many issues. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're glad you're here. Thanks for liking, subscribing, sharing the show, making sure the people know that we're out here getting things going on. Uh, what we do. Uh, this is interesting. Um, Israel said they're going to respond. By the way, uh, that came out again. Israel will respond. It's going to escalate. It's going to get worse. Mm -hmm. Um. I see a bunch of people and actors for Iran saying, we want peace with Israel. We don't want war. But then your government is doing what they did. Then I find this interesting, too, because Robert just brought this up. And I was wondering about this. I'm not just saying it because you said it. Robert said, regarding the conflict with Iran and Israel, something seems weird to me. No pictures of hit buildings. Little word on casualties video of pretty fireworks in the air oil markets unchanged anyone else wonder yes i wonder a lot of the situations that happen there make me go what the hell is going on mm -hmm. including october 7th but then again iran did it so I, I i they're they're not working with each other i have no idea yes tanya we know at&t is owned by china yes that is ridiculous well but yet the Biden administration and Democrats love China. Mm -hmm, they sure do. And if you're a Democrat, you love China. No, we don't. We never. Well, yes, you do. Yes, because do. if you support Biden, you love China. Uh, Megan says, yeah, it was all choreographed perfectly with Iran and Israel. I, I know it's they're not working together, though. But man, something seems off with that whole situation. Uh, once again, from the chat line, don't forget Starlink support freedom of speech. But I don't think Starlink is available uh, for this. It's only for rural areas. Yeah, yeah, I don't think we can get it here. We looked into it. The owner, Kevin, was looking into it at one point in time. I, I didn't think we could get it. Mm -hmm. And I and at one point, it was super expensive. Now, I've heard somebody say, oh, you can get that for free. And I'm like, uh, in what world? Yeah. Well, we couldn't get it for free. We're not a Democrat. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, uh, that, yeah. So what happened today? We got in a little bit late. Um, and the reason we got in late, um, what's that? Jimmy Swagger SBN had prayers this morning. I don't know what that means. Yeah. I, I don't Good know. Good old Jimmy Swagger. Uh, I haven't thought about him in a long time. Megan says she has it. I have it. You have what? Uh, I guess Starlink she's talking about. Oh, okay. That would be cool. Yeah. I'd like to know more about that. Me too. Um, and Glenn says that's because hardly the missiles got through the Iron Dome. That's sure. We saw mm -hmm. the video of the Iron Dome taking care of things perfectly. And I brought this up yesterday 
But then I'm like, man, how can the Iron Dome be so damn good? But then uh, you have what happened on October 7th. That didn't make any sense to me. Right. You're not going to be able to get missiles through, but we're going to open up a uh, opening so everybody can come in and do the damage that they did. Uh, good morning to everybody. Mandy says, wag the dog. It does make you think. It does make you wonder mm -hmm. those things that are going on. So we got in a little bit late this morning because um, AT&T is absolutely brutal with their service. They are brutal. If I could change, I would in mm -hmm. a heartbeat. Yep. I pay way too much money for fiber in this building to have sub par service when it comes to AT&T. Right. So that's why we got on the AT&T subject out of the gate where mm -hmm. I was like, damn, can't stand this crap that's going on. Um, and I wish I had better. Oh, Jimmy Swagger prays for Israel. Okay. That's what they were talking about. Yeah. Lots of people are praying um, because. Somebody's saying Swagger passed away a while ago. So who. I, I, maybe a network. I have no idea. Yeah. Probably the, probably the network did. I, I have no idea what's going on over there uh, with the prayers, but obviously prayers somebody needs released to today. Yeah. And always, of course, um, in other big news, um, it's what happened with Donald Trump yesterday. Mm -hmm. oh, man, 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 man. Um, this judge, we're seeing it again. Everything is, cal you talk about everything calculated, coordinated, wag the dog. It's what's going on in New York. It's yeah. what is being done to Donald Trump. That's right. And Donald Trump spoke about what was happening to him yesterday mm -hmm. after he was in court because he has now been told he can't miss any days of court or he could go to jail. He was told he can't go to his son's graduation. Now that's bullshit. Or right he there. could go or he could go to jail. Um, six to eight week trial. This is all the tr it's election interference. And Democrats, if you're out there, I'm calling you out. Mm -hmm. If you're not calling this out, shame on you. Shame on you because you know that this is the dirtiest, nastiest, illegal stuff. Ju this Judge Meachin, what a devil guy Gosh. this guy is. Full of evil hatred. And you know what? I wish Donald Trump would would go ahead and go to his son's graduation. It's not that I want him to go to jail, but could you imagine the uprising if he goes to jail? I mean, that's what I mean. I don't know that I could not. Gosh, I think I would go to my kid's graduation and then go to jail if I had to, because the up the somebody needs to notice what's going on. Don't you think there'd be some Democrat I, that would get upset if no, Trump was in jail? Or do I, you think they'd love it? I was given a message laughing. Ha ha. I can't even go to his son's graduation. The, somebody. OK, I'm going to tell you this. Whoever that is laughing and you don't have to tell me who it is. That person is a petty imbecile. Well, they are. I mean, they're racist. They're bad. Um. It, it, it's here. We're going to show you. Here's Donald Trump. Donald Trump talking about what's going on in this trial when he left yesterday. And it, it's it, it it's just so damn amazing to me what is being done and what is being said by these judges right before our eyes in this third world country that we live in now. Yeah, for sure. When it comes to everybody's banana republic we're gonna do whatever we can with our dirty paid off judges he should have been recused wasn't daughter making money on the case and here's donald speaking about what's happening this is an assault on america nothing like this has ever happened before there's never been anything like it. Every legal scholar says this case is nonsense. It should never have been brought. It doesn't deserve anything like this. There is no case, and they've said it. People that don't necessarily follow or like Donald Trump said this is an outrage that this case was brought. This is political persecution. This is a persecution like never before. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. And again, it's a case that should have never been brought. It's an assault on America. And that's why I'm very proud to be here. This is an assault on our country. And it's a country that's failing. It's a country that's run by an incompetent man who's very much involved in this case. This is really an attack on a political opponent. That's all it is. So I'm very honored to be here. Thank you very much. Okay, Donald Trump trying to put everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. um, literally, I heard people, uh, there was two two people making fun of how he looked. I can't even believe that. I mean, 
he is a man that he said that he's even proud to be here. He's proud to keep fighting for us because he loves Americans. He loves our country. Yes, he is a Christian nationalist with those people that are making fun of him. That's what they're calling him. He's just a terrible Christian nationalist. And what's so bad about being a Christ follower and somebody that loves their country? I feel really bad for him. And you know who else I feel really bad for besides Donald Trump is not only their son, Barron, but I feel sorry for Melania that Melania has to go to graduation without her husband there. That's one of the proudest days you have in your child's life is their high school graduation. Maybe something will happen. I'm uh, hoping so. I, I got a feeling it was all coordinated because of then at the last was. moment, then the judge allows him to go for a day and then he comes out as the hero. Yes. Uh, um, yes, you're right. You but, you meaning the judge comes out as yeah, the hero. It's like, he let him yeah, go. here, I'm going to let you. Yeah, Just, let it's all go. about setting expectations. Yeah. Life is about expectations. And if you're like, no, we're not going to, well, then you give in at the last moment, uh -huh. then you're not such a bad guy. That's right. Or a bad gal. Mm -hmm. Good well, point. That is what they're probably going to do. But here's the problem that Democrats have made. They know, they know what's happening and they're trying to do whatever they can. There's no way in hell they really think that what they have done to Donald Trump is going to make people not want to vote for him. There's no way their entire plan has backfired on. It him. is. It is. The, the, and. And not only has it backfired, the entire situation has become one where, oh, here you go. Mm -hmm. Not only is it back, it's promoted Donald Trump. Yeah, that's right. Um, it has promoted him in a way that nobody could have ever met. And they continue to do what they're. And at the end of this, it's going to be a bunch of nothing, just like the E. Jean Carroll case was. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be all one sided. When Joe has a chance, just kind of nod to me, Joe, when you, you have to. Look at new polling that has come out. Um, once again, if anybody's wondering if this is having an effect, um, this from the Echelon Insights, the Heritage Foundation poll, this was from March 19th, eh, about a month ago, we, we saw this. This has been unchanged. Just, I wanted to remind people the kind of leads that Donald Trump has, mm -hmm. and we're told they're getting bigger. And the other situation that's happening is now RFK is taking votes away from Joe Biden. That's right. Not Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And now they've got a double whammy on their hands. So we showed you that. Also from the chat line, Bragg, the prosecutor, reduces felony charges to a misdemeanor 50% of the time. This is the first time ever, ever, that he has raised a misdemeanor to a felony. Keep that in mind. This judge who is letting criminals off the hook half the time for the first time ever has now increased a misdemeanor to a felony. The fix is in. The dirty is there. He's a DEI hire. He's not a very smart man. He got his job because of the color of his skin and, 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 the, and the name and the party. And now he is going after Donald Trump. Because it's all about stopping the Trump train express because you know as well as we do, this is a communist ploy, it is a communist act, and it has become a communist party. The Democratic Party has become a communist party. I'm saying it. It's right there for you. If you back that and you know what's going on, it has become a communist party and you have That's to right. call it what it is. Now, do I feel sorry for people who are liberals and back this? I do. I feel sorry for you. Because you're just not that intelligent anymore. They can't be intelligent. Because when you see somebody being treated like this mm -hmm. and you just sit back and go, yep, that's my party. Mm -hmm. that, I, I can't. Can you really? I mean, what kind of character person are you? That's right. You have zero character mm -hmm. to think that you're that it's all right to still have a party like this and go, you know what? Oh, yeah, it's all right to back this. Um. Mods should block the person. They're just I mean, talking about somebody's reporting people. Oh, the by the way, this is a federal violation. Bragg doesn't have the authority to prosecute. I did see that as well. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's all falling apart. Everything. If they can take money from Donald, they will. When there, when there can be the judge, jury, and executioner. That's the only time that they can do this. That's right. The Federal Elections Commission said there was no campaign finance illegal activity. How does Bragg even have a case? He doesn't really. But the problem is, is that when you're in New York, you can do whatever the hell that you want to do. That's right. When you have a, a district attorney who's working with 
Jack Smith on all these cases at the highest level to go after Trump. And then you have a dirty judge in Meachin. You can do whatever you want. We saw it with Judge Ignorant as well. It's happening only in a liberal, liberal area, even in the first day of jury trial yesterday. They they couldn't even they couldn't even start to get the jury picked because there were so many people who had issues and problems mm -hmm. with what was happening. Um, once again, it was a misdemeanor. The statute of limitations also expired in 2019, and they're continuing to push this forward because they can for the time being. Those are the things that they are doing without any that they have no checks and balances. And with no checks and balances, it becomes just like a third world country, as we were talking about. Things get worse and worse and worse and worse. Um, I, I'm glad that Trump lashed out at the judge because he needs to. Now, they said if he has any, quote, outburst in court, they're going to arrest him mm. where he's not allowed to even say anything. Now, they're going to continue the jury selection process today on day two. Um, and it, it'll be interesting to see if they're, uh, how do you even pick a jury? I don't think they I, can. I think no one. Cause this is a, it, picked he's yesterday. a Trump hating judge. Yes. And that whole pool is contaminated. The jury pool the whole of thing. all New York. Give me, I said it yesterday. There's no way in hell they're going to be able to find that. This could take weeks and weeks before they can even come up with a jury. And there's going to be people that are lying and saying that they're impartial and they're still going to try. Well, of course they are. Trump. Of so that's what we're going to have there. And, and Donald Trump, you know, when he were, he asked again, or his group of people asked again for the judge to recuse himself, he's not going to do that. And people act surprised that he's not going to do that. We all know that this is a vendetta, that they're all scared to death. I don't care what anybody says. These Democrats are scared to death because they know what they've done. They know we know what they've done. And they're going to do anything to not have Donald Trump there. But you know what? If it wasn't Donald Trump and it was some other true conservative, they would be doing that to them too. They're, they've just gotten so damn. Maybe, cool. but they know now. They know now that, oh crap, he's going to win. Yeah, they know that. Oh, they absolutely crap. know that. They know that he has got the American people. It, it won't even be a close contest. They've got to cheat. They've got to go after Donald Trump with election interference right now. Mm -hmm. Do whatever they possibly can. Robert says, we do not live in a free country. We really don't. Slash company. The Trump trial mm -hmm. proves it all. Yes. If people didn't see it beforehand, I agree with Robert. Our country is only an illusion of being free right now. We're not free at all. We are controlled on almost every level. Now, we can, can kind of control what school our kids go to, kind of control what job we have, kind of control what sports our kids play. But really, it's like, do you remember that movie, The Truman Show? Yes. That's what we're living it. in. That we're, I really feel like at times we're living in The Truman Show. Well, this whole trial it, it, it's just it, it's to keep our it's to hurt donald trump but it's also to keep our attention off other things and then you have michael avenatti obviously the lawyer from st louis area from the parkway area who's in jail right now because he you know he was found guilty of stealing about three hundred thousand dollars from his former client stormy daniels and here's the other issue that came with all of that he says the fix is in he's like 100 he says the fix is in um he also went on to say um, that there was no cover up, that there was no, quote, hush money, um, that it's all a lie. Mm -hmm. And he's criticizing the district attorney, Bragg, for allowing witnesses to make critical statements about Trump to the media, which is actually going on there as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and then you also think back, nobody cares. I mean, Clinton paid $850,000 to Paula Jones, but everything was fine. Mm -hmm. Guys, th th there are no holds barred when it comes to politics. And that's why that's right. And that's why I don't think America is the best country in the world anymore it's because so of the crap that is allowed here, because we have allowed the Democratic Party to be. And, and I'm going to be kind. We have allowed the Democratic Party to be hijacked by horrible people with horrible intentions for this entire country. That's right. You're exactly right.
And we need to be very careful. And this is why I'm, I'm ashamed of Democrats. I, I believe yeah. in having checks and balances and having parties. And that's why you have to work. But literally, if you're a Democrat, shame on you yeah. and shame on your friends and your family for not speaking up and saying more about what's going. It doesn't matter if Trump wins or loses, but to do this in fake situations, mm -hmm. you can't go be at your son's graduation. I, give me for something fake for something so fake. And I can't believe that the Democrats really believe all these stories. I mean, going all the way back to Russia, 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 and all of these fake trials and all of these fake accusations. And he never, he gets accused of it, but then they never can convict him because he'd already be in jail. He would have been in jail such a long time ago if he had actually done any of these things. Because, you know, like, look at Mark Hayson. He's like, he's going to go to jail. He's going to go to jail. But he said he was going to go to jail eight years ago. Yeah, he's not going to jail. He's not going to jail. <laughs> Mark Hayson also says that Trump's broke. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, I'd like Trump's money. Mm -hmm. The thing about it. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and guess what? This is the one thing that I found, and this is what's sad about Democrats. Yeah. And, and I'm sorry, I know it's not all Democrats, but if you're part of the democratic party, that's your team. That's right. And if part of your team is out there doing whatever they're doing, then that's your team. You deal with it. Mm -hmm. They're looking for anything they can. They really the, are. The, tr the Trump derangement syndrome people. He's broke. Okay. Even, let's just say you're right. Even if he was, who cares? What does it matter? Yeah. He's still going to kick the shit out of Biden in the election in any fair process. He's still the best president in modern time that we've ever had. And he is still living rent free in your brain. So who the F cares if he's broke? He is doing it for this country. That's and right. if he is broke, guess what? He chose to be broke to save this nation great point because there. he gets nothing out of it mm -hmm. unlike everybody else who became president then became multi-millionaires he came into office to lose money he chose that path once mm -hmm. he chose it a second time this is truth this is black and white truth so who the f cares if he's broke or not, what does that have to do with running the country? Well, and how can you be broke? Like, like Todd is saying, he, he just posted a $146 million bond. Poor people can't do that. They just want to hurt him. They do want to, they don't want to, they want to hurt him bad. They don't want to help the country. That's right. They want to hurt him. Mm -hmm. They don't want to help the country. They don't want to help the every average Joe citizen in America. All they want to do is hurt him and oh yeah and by the way as glenn reminds us yeah he, he did donate a salary on top of that yeah on top of that that's what you I'm tell thinking. me who you want running your country mm -hmm. but people don't break down those situations because what i have seen most of the democrats who i deal with have such a hatred of freedom red white and blue country mm -hmm. and back that they can't get out of their own way that's so true and then the pride issue comes most Democrats that I've talked about, not the ones leading the charge, they don't like Donald. I mean, they don't like Joe Biden. They don't. They don't want to vote for him. They don't. But they allow, they sit back and allow their party to attack Trump and they just sit there, which shows me that they don't care if this is going on mm -hmm. against Donald Trump. Um, there are videos about Sleepy Don damn copycats. Not sure what that is. Um, yeah. Who the F cares? Once again. Oh, yeah. And of course, Obama gave himself an 18 percent raise when he left office. Of course, of course he did. Of course mm -hmm. he did. So once again, all the Democrats have is he's broke. He's mean. Yeah. And yeah, he's just and mean. Cares? And, 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 and what and does it's that the mean? Rape. Everybody, he rapes women. How can you vote oh, for yeah. people that rapes women? Yeah, but even that liberal that's on our network told me, well, yeah, there was an evidence, but it doesn't matter if there was evidence. It matters what the jury said. That's right. But of course, a tainted jury led by a judge who was ultra liberal as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's simple. Um, the problem for the Democrats are they're just not very educated people. They're really not. I, I mean, I seriously feel bad because, you know, there's a chromosome missing or off or it's. Are there just a damn follower? I'm not going to say follower. that they're that they have the mental illness that you've talked about. I, I do think they have a mental illness. I really do. If they're really a die hard progressive left, 
Look at who they are. Now, I'm not saying maybe just the Democrat who isn't political at maybe all. I'll get just there. votes because they're maybe a I'll union. get there someday with you. <laughs> but I, I, I'm, you're right. If they're a Democrat and they're only voting because they're union, they're just they're a follower, and and literally their union has them by the balls. But if they are a progressive lefty. They have a mental illness, and I will stick to saying that. Look who they are. I mean, they have they, they are the ones that want to take girls to turn them into boys. They want boys and girls bathrooms. They wear wear weird color hair while they're having sex acts on a sidewalk. I mean, they're they're mental they're mentally ill. I, I will I will say that for sure. Balls. Yep. Balls. balls. Got them by the balls. They, they do. That, that's it. If you're a Democrat right now, the only reason you're a Democrat is because someone has you by the balls and is balls. typically a Democrat person. And like in their unions, I know a lot of great union men and women, but they're now really closet Republicans. If you're still voting, voting Democrat, you don't even know what's going on in the world. You're now you have stubborn. a vagina. That's right. <laughs> now you have a vagina. So, I mean, all those things, they are they have a mental illness. I, I will say that till the cows come home. Um, I love Laura Loomer. You know, guys, I've been talking about her for a long time. You should follow her on X. She was out and she was doing, I think, for Real American News. She's been a correspondent for them in New York. I love uh, yesterday. She was attacked. She was uh, the, the dam. And I'm sorry. And I can't stand. I repeat, I cannot stand you fake Hamas supporters, Ugh. you fake Palestinian support. You're all fake. They are fake. You're a bunch of fake. You're fake. And you know it. If you want to have a serious conversation and talk about serious issues, sit down like a civilized person. Stop acting like a savage, rabid dog mm -hmm. running around with your rabies all over the damn place. <laughs> then, then let's talk. But they do until, look like they have But rabies. until you do that, you're fakes and mm -hmm. you're phonies. Yeah. And it's you know the same it. People. And you have to live with yourself doing that day in, day out, day in, day out, not wanting to talk truth. Well, anyway, they they attacked Lori yesterday, throwing flags on her, spitting on her, because she was out trying to ask questions regarding Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. She's out in front of the courthouse. And she's actually, and you know what? I love her for doing this because you know what? She's actually out trying to get, and she's peaceful. She's not screaming and yelling, but she is asking questions. She is polite and she is persistent, as we have always talked about on this show. And we need more people like Laura Loomer because you have to stand your ground. Well, CNN and what she did is they, they call this getting loomered, but she's out on the street and she finds these politicians and tries to get them on camera to see what they want to do. The woman she went after is a Trump hating anchor who gives her opinion all the time on air. But when asked by Laura Loomer a question, she refuses to answer. Because once again, she's fake like all the anchors on CNN, another Democrat liberal anchor. And unfortunately, as I've told you before, most of your local news anchors and almost all of your national news anchors, besides your conservative, three of them, a couple of them, like Fox News and Newsmax, they're liberals. The people that you see, oh, we love you. Check out our weather. Check out our sport. Check out our news. Mm -hmm. And the reporter, they're liberal. I work there. For like 25 years, if I said anything, oh, just be quiet, Vic. Be quiet. Pick your battles. Oh, you're just a Trump lover. I mean, I'm like, no, I'm I'm a lover of all sides of a story. You so, want the truth. So remember, your local news are filled mostly with liberals. They are. They're liberals. That's why the news has gotten so bad. So with that being said, you need more people like Laura Loomer. So she found the CNN anchor who rips, and I mean rips Trump all the time. And had a judge on talking about the situation with Donald Trump and how it shouldn't have happened and th with this trial. So look at her. She finds the anchor. And this anchor who wants to talk, 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 and give her opinion, she just walks away. This is Laura Loomer finding her. Hey, Caitlin. Caitlin. Hey, Hi. Laura Loomer here. I was just wondering, you know, the other day you had a judge on. The other day you had a retired U.S. federal judge on your show and you were asking her about the motion that was filed by President Trump and his legal team about whether or not Judge Mershon should recuse himself, right, over his daughter's mm -hmm. conflicts of interest. What do you think about that? I saw that the judge actually said that the motion was pretty strong, but you didn't really have much to say. Well, we had her on the show, didn't we? Yeah, but you didn't really have much to say when she said it was strong. Do you think that Judge Mershon should recuse himself? 
Doesn't want to answer the question? No? All right. All right, well, as you can see, that's Caitlin Collins from uh, CNN. She's one of the biggest Trump haters out there, and she doesn't want to answer the question. She had a retired U.S. federal judge from the Southern District of New York on her show the other day asking about whether or not uh, this motion requesting recusal was strong enough, and she didn't want to uh, acknowledge what the judge said, and the judge said that uh, it was strong. So just more bias from CNN. They're part of the Get Trump movement, as we know, but... Look, she has so much to say. These people have so much to say when they're on TV, but then when you ask them a question, they just run away. I was very polite. I was very nice. I didn't yell at her, but she didn't want to stop. And as soon as I said who I was, she ran away. But that's a good thing about having a press badge too, is they can't run and they can't hide. <laughs> I love that. I love her so much. They didn't have a script. They didn't have a script. When Laura Loomer comes up and she loomers you, you better have your script out if you're a Democrat or you're just going to keep on walking. Okay. that's And let me remind you something about Laura. She doesn't, and it's not for everybody, but she doesn't have some long extensive background in in journalism and TV, which makes her so good. Now, it doesn't work for everybody because I'm sorry. I do know some people who have ran in over the years. They think they can, oh, I want to go out. I'm going to be this person. And then they don't have it. Right. They don't, they don't have they it. They just don't have good. the X factor. Yeah. She, has she does. It. And she's learning quickly. Uh-huh. I love her shirt. I want that. What did her shirt say? It says Donald Trump did nothing wrong. Okay. I and like it kind of looks like a Black Lives Matter shirt. And that's what I love. Like the shirt that I come in and says Donald Trump Lives Matters is it's great to have it to look like it's a BLM because the people look at you, the liberals look at you expecting it to say BLM. And then when it says anything about Donald Trump and it's good, they literally lose their shit. <laughs> They really do. It's but so fun. This, But you know what? Who who can't stop you from going out and asking questions? Now, if you get a badge, uh, even better. Yeah. Badge, but you have to create that. Now, she has put a ton of work in and studying, and she's one of the best that I can find at getting information and developing sources because that's what she wanted to do. So mm -hmm. um, she, <laughs> now, I'm not even getting into there. I, I just love the fact that Laura Loomer is doing what she does and protecting as best as she can truth, especially regarding Donald Trump. So you need more people who are going to go out and stand up for what's right. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go out and yell, but you can be there now. Um, yeah. Matthew Hicks says she is great. Amen. Laura all coming in from the chat line. Um, you, you just, you, you gotta love the job that she's doing and, uh, we need more people like her if they can. So anyway, they get called out. They look silly. They look stupid with everything that's happening mm -hmm. with the Donald Trump case, because it's all wrong. This is, this is just a, a, a it, nothing have I ever, ever, ever seen anything like this happen before ever. Um, also, and you should know when it comes to media, NPR, we showed you the story last week where they had a veteran editor who blew the whistle on the liberal bias at his organization, an organization that does through a variety of channels, take your tax dollars in the amounts of millions and millions and millions of dollars to give a one sided story, mm -hmm. a liberal story. In fact, 87 to zero registered Democrats to registered Republicans receiving tax money, 87 to zero. 87 Democrats, zero Republicans in the newsroom at NPR. Well, Yuri Berliner is the guy who brought forward the information. So what did NPR do? They suspended him for five days without pay because he criticized NPR's liberal bias. Once again, if you're out and about, make sure people understand if they don't know yet, NPR is nothing but a bought and paid for communist network paid for by our tax dollars. That is fact. Listen to the algorithms. Watch the algorithms. If you put their shows into the computer algorithms, what spits out when it comes to liberal bias against conservative talk? His bombshell piece was uh, in the free press, and he talked about how they screwed up NPR and only did one side of Russiagate. The COVID lab leak theory, Hunter Biden's scandalous laptop, embracing the theory of systemic racism, and also accuse the organization of downplaying anti-Semitism following October 7th. Welcome to NPR. Thank you, Yuri, who actually came. He was literally the senior business editor and a 25-year 
decorated NPR veteran who just wanted to tell the truth. He wanted to tell both sides of the story. And NPR, taking your tax dollars, puts that message out, just like the national media is doing, just like the judge and the court system in New York is trying to do in the ultra liberal areas of New York. Mainstream media had a shot at the New York Stock Exchange. Val swung it, or took them down. I, I can't even see what you were talking about, Greg. Uh, I, I don't know what you're saying there. Anyway, never watch any mainstream media. Guess I should be glad that others do. So I still hear the slant, the slanted scoop. Yeah, some people do. Um, yeah. But I'm telling you, Laura is unbiased and she's honest and she brings it and she brings it forward. Mm -hmm. Glenn, thank you. And we need more people like you, Glenn. Um, as a matter of fact, I tried to get Glenn on here before a couple of times. Glenn needs to come on here. Uh, he said, we need more people like Vic Lizzie and what Projo does. Um, we're, we're trying. Absolutely. We're trying to get the word out. Uh, Derek says, I'm to the point to where if people are blocking the road and I need to get somewhere, uh, it will now be considered an emergency situation and they will be moved. 100%. Derek. Uh, 100. Yeah. Don't stand there. I mean, they were all over the place. You already hit it a little bit. People were blocked in so many of the major cities all over the United States. I saw them this weekend in KC, saw them a couple weekends ago in Chicago. They blocked bridges in San Francisco and people are getting frustrated and they stand there and they're the same people. Yeah, there looks like there's more Middle Eastern people this time around, but it's still the little skinny white dude with a mask on his face and black angry people all obstructing because they're getting paid by somebody. Soros probably. And it is time that we just drive right past them because why is their time more important than ours? No, their time shouldn't be more important. And it's not more important. And it's always an emergency. I yes. agree. Yes. Uh, and you got to tell your kids that because, you know, our kids do sometimes go in the major cities. And if somebody's coming up to their car and they're about ready to block it, you're like, that is when you use the gas pedal pretty forcefully and just keep on moving because they'll hurt you if you don't. And uh, then nothing uh, happens to them. Although I did hear that 40 people... 40, 45 people were arrested in Chicago this weekend. But what happens? They go there, Soros pays their bail, and they get out. That's what's happening mm -hmm. from story to situation to story to situation. But there were some, uh, there was a, a positive thing that happened yesterday. Positive. There was something yeah, good? Because, well, the Supreme Court gave us something. The Attorney General of Idaho requested that the Supreme Court lift a temporary injunction that was issued by a lower court in the state that was blocking the state from enforcing its own felony ban on gender affirming care for adolescents. So it was blocked. So they took it to the Supreme Court. And now what you have is a situation where last night uh, the Supreme Court ruled in favor of Idaho, meaning they can stop people from trying to give sex surgeries to minors. The Supreme Court came in favor, thank God, of not allowing people to go and get sex change surgeries for kids in these states that have bans and laws against them. Thank you, Supreme Court. Thank you for taking a stand when it comes to that situation, because we all know it's ridiculous mm -hmm. to do this with kids and to allow it to happen over and over and over again. And now it's becoming... Uh, a story all around the it's going to be a bigger story later in the day but with the supreme court doing this now they've sent a message that you can't do this crap and that if a state and i think it's going to see more and more of these uh issues becoming state issues um if this happens it's up to a state to do it it's up to the state to figure out okay we're going to have these rules we're going to do this we're going to pick what we think is best for us and idaho put the rule in place and the Supreme court backed him. Yeah. Well, and Bindi's saying she'd be in favor of a federal ban on gender treatment for minors. And Megan is saying, let's go Idaho. Other States need to follow their example. Well, it is a good point. I mean, think about that. You, you, if a state takes initiative, you just see that you have, you have backing now. That's right. And it's very important to have backing and it's, and you've got to have a Supreme court that is fair 
and balanced and, and protects our children. So many people, you know, I know our listeners know, and I know that I'm speaking to an echo chamber here, but so many people are hurting America's children and people seem to think it's their right because they are one of those wacky left mental jobs that think it's okay to hurt their child and, and take their genitalia off and, and nobody stops them. And it's like, but that's what happened when you literally take one little thing like, okay, it's okay to change the bathrooms. It's okay to be gay. It's now okay to be bi. Now we're going to have clubs, LGBTQ community. Now we're going to turn boys into girls. And the next, and they're trying really hard, is they're going to try to make pedophilia normal and you don't go to jail for it. You give it, you give a little bitty inch and they'll take more than a mile. And that's what's happening to America. And it's watering down the fabric of what's right and wrong here. Yeah, the law is going to be in effect until the entire court, the full court, has the opportunity to make a judgment in the case. So they got the initial blocking of the Democrat lower court, which tried to stop this, to say, yeah, you can go have gender surgery changing for minors. So until the ruling... And the ruling is going to stick. It's going to stay there. And what it will do is it will only apply to teenagers who sued to challenge the ban. So teenagers, a couple of them tried to stop this. That's once again, it's a few, mm -hmm. a few trying to change everything for the many. And Idaho, by the way, is one of, and I'm curious what you think about this. They're one of 23 states with policies that restrict gender transition medical treatments for minors only 23 states i mean are, does it seem like there should be more and wasn't there more in the past I, I i don't know i mean the whole thing seems so weird and donna's saying leave our kids alone she doesn't care what the adults do with their sex just leave the kids alone and stop advertising it so much um the states that have enacted laws restricting or banning gender affirming medical care for transgender minors mm -hmm. are Alabama, Arkansas, Arizona, Florida, Georgia, Idaho, who we were just speaking about, mm -hmm. Indiana, Iowa, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, North Carolina, North Dakota, Ohio, Oklahoma, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, and West Virginia. Any states on there that you're surprised that are not there that should have it that you think they would be? And I'll tell you one right out of the gate. What do you think? The one that surprised me is conservative as they try to act and as they try to be is Kansas. But Kansas is they're turning left all the time. Yeah, I got but Kansas is a state that won't even let you sell marijuana for medicinal purposes but but that but that a lot or of times recreation that's why all the kansas more... people come into missouri yeah yeah that's a good point that but a lot of conservatives voted to have marijuana too or i should say libertarians because they don't want the government telling them what they can and can't do about anything although most don't realize how regulated the dispensaries are these days but i'm not surprised about kansas i would have been maybe five six years ago but they're just really left in their um government offices i know oh, i don't know uh from the chat line trump's truth social formally launching video streaming platform the streaming content is expected to focus on live tv including news networks religious channels family friendly content including films and documentaries and other content that has been canceled is at risk of being canceled or is being suppressed on other platforms and services. That's what the company just said in a news release regarding uh, Truth Social. That gets me excited. I have to check. I'm not familiar with it. Did you hear that these were possibilities on the Trump Truth Social video streaming platform? I've heard that, but I haven't heard when that's going to happen. And that would be really great because we can't really have our show. If you notice, there's not a lot of shows on there because they don't have the formally launching video streaming platform. So I hope that happens. Interesting. Uh, Bendy thinks that Colorado is creeping into Kansas. I agree with her a hundred percent. Really? I know. I do. I do. I know Kansas is a backward state and everything. And they're not as backwards as you think and, and anymore. And, and, they're getting pretty progressive. Well, I mean backwards with their lot of the chromosomes missing. And oh God. Okay. Okay. This, this well, may, then you know there's a lot get, of Democrats. In no, that. I feel bad. You know, pe for people in Kansas. 
I do too. But you know, but I have relatives that live there that they think everything I say, a lot of them, once I started becoming on the show, they blocked me. My own relatives don't even want to talk to me and they live in Lawrence, Kansas. Oh, but Lawrence, there are a bunch of nut jobs in Lawrence. Okay. Well, thank you for saying that. They are. And I'm going to send that clip. Kansas, you're a bunch of nut jobs. They are. I learned all about that when I went to Mizzou. Kansas is a night. They're they're a nightmare. That, no, I don't disagree. Nightmare with you. graduates, nightmare university, nightmare town. I tell you what, Wichita loves podcasts though, because Why, every every podcast. I'm that teasing I've, to my J- Jayhawk friends, by the he, way. That was that was just more Mizzou making that fun was, of that was, Jayhawks. That was is all that was. But Kansas is they, they, they cheat in basketball. They they're just they're. They're just a well. Then, then Bindi's right that Colorado is creeping into Kansas. Maybe they are. Why? Why Wichita, buddy? So, with some of the stats from Audio Inc. and Mark Kaysen's Showdown, and I haven't checked ours. Uh, I don't have access to those. However, Wichita is one of the strongest listener bases of both of those shows. Damn, that's really interesting. That's crazy. Yeah, I did not know that. I mean, other than St. Louis, of course. Of course, of course. Which I, okay, yeah, you got me tongue tied there. I have no idea why. <laughs> I really don't. I, I, I'm just as confused. I just know that it's a they, they've got some some. <sighs> so you've talked yourself out of being surprised now that Kansas is not on that list. Because I've always thought of Kansas being a, a conservative yeah, state. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't that's why. So. Mm-hmm. That's why. Not any other reason. They've always been conservative. And if you can't even sell damn marijuana in the state, give me a freaking break. Oh, uh, they're for gender mm-hmm. sign reassignment surgery. Yeah. You can do gender reassignment surgery. Think about this. Yeah. You can do gender reassignment surgery in Kansas on minors. Yes. But you can't sell marijuana. That just shows that they're mental. I mean, it really does. That makes no Hello. sense. That makes no sense whatsoever. And I know a lot of conservatives that think it's okay to go to a dispensary, but they do not think it's okay to whack your kid's penis off. I mean, they just don't. That just shows you how whacked out Kansas is becoming. Or whack least, off your penis. Or at least Kansas, <laughs> Kansas's legislature. Um, Greg says the problem in Kansas is the fact that, you know, when you get divorced, you're still cousins. That's right. Yeah. The, That's the, exactly the, right. The blood line still stays there. That's exactly right. That's um, right. Robert saying Kansas equals AT&T. <laughs> and so for anybody that heard the beginning of our show, at and is communist. Yeah. That's AT&T, right. you suck. Your service sucks. Yeah, you do suck. Um, you charge way too much. Pay almost 200 freaking bucks a month for your fiber. And <laughs> and I and your your service sucks you lie you you're, you're it's gone down we we started the show late today so we are on Ooh, at least I am. I'm prickly today. I, I think we're all prickly today because of that. But it was great. Our chat line at the beginning. So if any of you have not seen it, the stories that came out of what people have had to deal with with AT and T yeah. is just catastrophic. I can handle it, but I haven't been sleeping. And when you can't sleep, and then you deal with all the stress on top of it, it makes you a little prickly. Yeah, and you we- probably need to get some sleep. Do you, you know what you need to do tonight? Drink some warm milk. Some warm milk. It like makes you want to go to sleep. No, I fall asleep fine. It's when I wake up, my head is racing. Yeah, I think that's pretty normal. I think a lot of people do that. Anyway, Kansas is, uh, yeah. Somebody says I'm going to get my ass kicked. Yeah, how? Who? Who's going to kick your ass? Bring it on! That's funny. I didn't see that. Because I'm calling out Kansas? Oh, well, okay. Some Kansas dude is going to come in here and try to kick your ass, I guess. uh, Is that what they're saying? Whatever. Um, No. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever, whatever, wherever. Um, what the hell? We're easing out of a mercury retrograde. Well, that's probably why you're prickly. I don't know. Donna mm-hmm. says, don't poke the Vic bear. Yeah, don't do it. No, we're not going there. Why um, is mercury always in retrograde? That's what, right. What? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what's happening. You're prickly and AT&T are a bunch of a-holes. Oh, my God. The that. service. People, I don't know if you're new to the show right now or new in general, but I mean, I literally brought up. AT&T and how bad they are. And then everybody, they really did. Everybody has a damn AT&T story. We're forced to get it. We can't, we don't have a choice because the Austin build that we work in had AT&T. The fiber is already here. Yeah. We can't have anything else. And yeah. And we have to get high grade to put out what we have. So we do this. And then of course, AT&T does what they do. I've had it. Yeah. You know what? 
I know a soon to be state senator who might be able to help me with AT and T. So, and now that he's here, you're not going to be hurt. <laughs> I feel like going after freaking AT and T. You should. You costing should. us thirty minutes of our show or whatever. How it was. dare them cost thirty minutes of our precious time? Um. Yeah, it is interesting. Uh, Joe should play uh, kung fu fighting. Yeah, whatever. We got it. Uh, all those things that are happening. This is cancel this cancel the show.com. Vic Faust, Lizzie Sparks, Pro Joe in the house. Uh, obviously, we've talked about the issues regarding Donald Trump, and uh, I'll have to ask uh, David Gregory about that a little bit too, just because, I mean, he's in a court of law a that's lot. right he deals in law he's an attorney um about everything that's going on there but 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 we get pissed off when people especially our elders are not taken care of lied to cheated on yeah that makes me um mad. because uh you know I, there is no reason there really is no reason and with that we welcome in our good friend he is the man you want to go with for a variety of reasons, David Gregory. David, welcome in, my friend, former state rep. Uh, Dave's been on the show before a few times. He is running for state senate as well. And my friend, he is the super conservative attorney. I've said it before. I don't know. You're like five for five, seven for seven, maybe a hundred for a hundred by now and, <laughs> and representing conservative causes where most people don't. And that's why we want to get your name out as best as we possibly can. Um, you filed a lawsuit against St. Louis County Executive Sam Page. What is going on with that, buddy? I'll tell you what, I sued Sam Page. That's a lot of fun, isn't it? No. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> the amount of support you get as soon as I say I sued Sam Page, the flood of support. Did, is it really? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's. Uh, it's I thought nice. everybody loved Sam Page. Um, <laughs> Does anybody really yeah, love Sam Page? Um, that, 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 that David Gregory, he's mean to me. Uh, so I just follow the science, but I'll tell you what, I've had enough. I don't know if you guys are following what's going on with the senior tax credit on the yes. St. Louis County side, but these guys are screwing around. Our County councils had six months since they passed mm -hmm. this to fund this and get this program off the starter. They haven't given a penny yet. Uh, Sam page has been saying he needs eight gazillion dollars to get it done. I don't think that's accurate either, but nonetheless, we've got to get this done. There's a June 30th deadline, right? So, um, uh, you know, our seniors have to apply by June 30th to qualify. And explain for our, the listeners and viewers what exactly that means when it comes to what Sam Page is not doing. Yeah, let me back up. So uh, in order to qualify for the senior tax credit uh, to freeze your property taxes, you've got to apply. Right? You got to go online. You got to apply for it and show and prove your eligibility. Fair enough, right? Well, what happened was in October of last year, our council created that law but they've never provided a mechanism by which you can apply. So they've oh created God. a legal right to a tax credit and then provided a deadline to that legal right, but then they've given you no way to actually go online and apply for the tax credit. That is illegal, right? Wow, and how can you get illegal. away with that? Well, uh, I'll tell you what, he's not. We're gonna make this, we're gonna get this done for the seniors. He's not gonna get away with well, it. Well, thank but. God you're doing something about it because so many people don't understand that first of all, you have to apply. Mm -hmm. And second of all, if you have to apply, there's no place to apply. There's nowhere to go. And if you go on the website, actually That's St. Louis crazy. County's website, it, under the senior tax freeze uh, section, up pops this this page that says, sorry, uh, the council hasn't funded us. So we have no way to provide you a mechanism by which you oh apply. My gosh, It is just so frustrating for our seniors who are being driven out of their homes. Well, fr right off the bat uh, from the chat line, Lisa says, hey, David, thank you so much for exposing Sam Page. Um, well, then she says, oh, we don't need that visual. But <laughs> but you know what she means. Thank you for exposing and people thanking you for being a super conservative attorney. Um, so you you file this lawsuit. What do you think can really come out of this and the timing of it? Because I guarantee is as you've campaigned and talked to so many people in St. Louis County, uh, I, I'm sure people in this age bracket are like, man, we, we need help. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. I mean, I'm getting a flood of support. I mean, here's the deal. My hope uh, is that we figure this out, right? The council's pointing fingers the uh, at the executive. The executive, Sam Page, is pointing fingers at the council. Um, and so I'm bringing everybody together and saying, we're going to figure this out. We're going to see what needs to happen, and we're going to get this done for our seniors. Uh, it would be honored to, to at the end, to get this done and just drop the lawsuit. But if not, I'm going to plow through and I'm going to win. Okay, so how can anybody uh, get ideas and timing on what you would think when it comes to this lawsuit? Oh man, you're asking a lawyer to predict litigation I'm timing. Sorry. Oh, my but God. I here, here's my point. Why does Sam Page 
not want to do this? Why, why do you think he's saying what he's saying or doing what he's doing? Sam Page has been pretty clear. His position is, I need money. I need people, right? Uh, and that was his response to my lawsuit yesterday. I will do this, but you got to give me the money to do it. So his position, Sam's position has been pretty clear. Now, the council hasn't done anything in six months. A lot of people are frustrated with the council as well. We've got uh, Republican Ernie Trachis from the south part of the county. He's, uh, he's, 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 a, he's a champion trying to pass $1.3 in funding. And there seems to be a big dispute in TIF over how much money should this program cost, right? We want to be responsible, but at the same time, we can't play with the lives of our seniors. No, you can't. Talking with attorney David Gregory, also running for Missouri State Senate. If you could remind everybody what you're running for and how that uh, is going. Last polling I saw had not only had you as the predicted winner for this um, Senate seat, which represents St. Louis County, which, by the way, going into the election, for all of our viewers and listeners, is the only seat that was held by a conservative, That's uh, right. w- which it just blows my Andrew K- Koenig That's turning right. out. So Dave is running for that seat. The good news is, because I know you and I've worked with you and I've been through some good battles with you and <laughs> done stories with you. So I've gotten to know you over the years um, that you do care and you didn't do the job to get into politics for fame and fortune, we all know that, and <laughs> and you care and you go to bat. So with that being said, let people know about where you're running, what's happening, why you want this job. Yeah, quick quick tidbit, folks. I'm running for uh, Senate District 15, basically the west part of the county, right? So everything west of 270, Chesterfield, Wildwood, Baldwin, Ellisville, Town and Country, you name it, um, all of West County, um, that's the seat. And, and folks, here's the deal. I am tired of our squishy, do nothing politicians, especially the ones that are on our same team. We have too many even Republicans that get elected and they go up there and they do nothing. They become either rhinos or at a minimum, just total squish pushovers. I'm tired of it. That's why I'm here. I'm on a mission. I cannot wait to just steamroll when I get to the Senate. Oh my God, you get me excited. A squi- What'd you call them? Squishy. Oh, squishy. That squishes. Was I call them that squish- was perfect. You know, squish- definitely squishes, squishy. You know? That's cute. Sam, you know Step what? aside. I, uh-huh. I met Sam. I've talked about this before. I had a drink with Sam here at this facility, as a matter of fact. <laughs> okay. And and I and I was like, even though I find him to be squishy, mm-hmm. he was decent, at least in talking surface stuff. But then when we get into all these major issues, it's like, oh my God, he's all squishy. It's yeah. all squishy. Squishy's a perfect word for what Sam Page. What a great page. name. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Squish. Squishy Page. A squish. Yeah. Yeah. Squish. Squishy Sam Page. You got your rhinos uh, on one uh-huh. side and you got your squishes on another. Yeah. So I'm going to box them in, guys. This is going to be exciting. Um, we're going to see what we can't do to make the council do their job so that then I can do my job and force Sam Page to do his job. It's amazing how that works. Uh, Margie says, when do we vote for you? Make sure that they understand. Yeah, folks, uh, uh, the primaries are August 6th this year, right? So same as what, what the presidential primaries would have been had we not done that goofy caucus system. Mm-hmm. So August 6th are the primaries, and then just like the presidential election in November will be the general election. I'd love your vote on both. Uh, I'm predicted to win. There's been multiple polls. A lot of people assume I'm going to win. I'm not taking it for granted. I'm going to work my absolute butt off. And in the meantime, I'm going to sue Sam Page. I'm going to win there too. I like that. You got to call your shot and do it. I don't know anybody who knocks on more doors than Dave as well. And it's one thing to try to get votes, but it's another thing when you actually do care about our elder community, because anybody who gets older, you know, you start to feel like people don't care about you. And there's a variety of those issues. And uh, Dave is out there. I mean, I asked you privately, you're like, dude, I, I got to care. I got to get in and talk to the guys and talk to the gals who are the ones who are leaner community, who care, who are trying to get the vote out. And he's like, a lot of times it's our older community yeah. because they care and they still know how important voting is. Mm-hmm. They do. They care. They watch. They listen. They pay attention. That's what I really respect about uh, our more senior voters is they know they're watching, right? Nothing against uh, the, the younger folks, but we we tend to feel we're busy, right? We got a lot going on and soccer practice, and but uh, the seniors, they watch, they listen, and uh, they're super sharp. So I'm excited. I'm going to be earning their vote. I hope, I hope every one of them are cheering me along, but I tell you what, so many of them are coming out of the woodworks. They're brave too. That's awesome. I don't know if they're like, I just have nothing else to lose or I don't care, or I just hate Sam Page. They are coming out of the woodworks. I love that. Can we join your lawsuit? Can we be a plaintiff? Absolutely. The answer is absolutely. Well, Gary says you got to go kick Sam Page's ass. We <laughs> I plan on it. Thank we, you. We appreciate yeah. that. Well, and Todd is, is saying that Sam Page is whining on the news today, saying that they lost most of their budget, so now they're understaffed, and so they're going to not pay the poor old people because they're understaffed. 
staff. See, that's frustrating. How do you break because, that down? Yeah, folks, the council cut the Department of Revenue. And then they How? implement this program. They, but, they take money away from them and they say implement the program. I'm so frustrated with both. Wow. Both. I, what are I, you doing to these people? What but, are you doing? But is that a Republican and Democratic decision? Because we know that the council is, is it's a four, three Democrat to Republican favorability. I mean, you got seven members. Does that mean they all vote down party lines? Uh, no, no. I mean, I, I think with this one, they got it done. Uh, they got it done barely four to three. So they had a Democrat flip uh, to go with it. But what's so interesting is, um, is you know, there's just, I, I didn't quite follow the political dynamics of it. The frustrating part for me is, is they all want to tout and, and do a victory lap and parade around like we're heroes to seniors. And then they want to play games behind the scenes, not fund it, not do anything. I'm tired of it. And, uh, and a new story I was covered in Channel 4 last night, Ernie Trakis went on and he's like, we made a promise to these people. We need mm -hmm. to deliver. So he's got some great statements, too. I think the fire's been lit, right? Good. Uh, you know, I was asked, w would you drop your lawsuit if if the program was started? Well, of course I would. That's why I'm suing. Yeah, then, <laughs> then sure. it's over. That's a win. I'll well, drop it tomorrow if you guys start this thing. OK, one more question from that standpoint. So do you think Sam Page is hiding behind information hiding behind money when he could actually do something without the money or does he need staff to implement what he's trying to say he does i don't know um and so i can say with it with with an assumption that it seems it seems reasonable to say i need some money that seems really reasonable to say we can't implement a brand new complicated program right uh we had saint charles's revenue director come in They've already implemented it. They gave her 300 grand an employee. And she said for ours, which is a third of the size, I still don't have enough money. So here we have more evidence from a St. Charles revenue director that says even 300 grand is not enough for a county, the third, the size and less complex uh, check system. So, so, I mean, again, I, I, I don't know that he's hiding behind uh, the, the reasonable argument is the council needs to give him a fair enough money. What is the fair enough money? We got to get this going because our citizens, our seniors, they have a legal right to apply by June 30th. Well, I got a message saying, Dave, if you want to get in the good graces of Sam Page and maybe have him start to do this for seniors, get him a really nice customized mask. <laughs> that <laughs> That's a great that, idea. That says, that is. I, I love seniors. No, yeah. No, I love wait, Sam Page. I love, <laughs> that, that says dictator on it. Dictator. Okay, <laughs> I can do that. You know what? I'll do that because uh, I'm going to challenge him. I'm going to challenge him. Come on, it. radio shows, forums. I'm going to challenge him to to talk to me about he this as long never, as lawyers will let Dave, him. Yeah. You're, Dave, you're too good. You're too smart. Yeah, well, we're, we're going to try. You're, you're too good at speaking. And you're too good of a guy that he would never, ever step into the debate realm with you. Never. Never. Dave, never. you showed up yesterday with the lawsuit. He's like, I agree. I agree with Dave. I don't want problems with Dave. <laughs> I, I, just, I didn't hear him say quite that, I but just, I did hear him say, give like, me the money and I'll do the program. He's like, I, I would love to that. share a mask with Dave. <laughs> That's right. That's his dictator. I, I need to find him a nice custom mask, don't I? You do. If I get to the end and win, whether it's a settlement or a complete steamrolling, yes. I should present him with a with a with a with a mask. That's right. I will absolutely will you guys help me with that? Can you guys help yes. me? Yes, and, and then give him a listeners? picture. Can they help me with that? Yeah, you, right, give him right. a picture of the morgue too. That morgue that he set up during that period of time and say, <laughs> oh This was God. a good use of the Maybe money, a Sammy. Frame of the morgue with a golden mask in front of it. There you go. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. Well, it. it's not that often that we see um, super attorneys like yourself, your personal injury attorney, you're amazing. And I'll tell more of my stories coming up, but Dave helped me when I was in need and I could not believe how well he helped me. And that's why we promote his business at the same point in time. You're going to hear more from Dave coming up on cancel this and some of the projects that we work with, with the injury council. So with that, that's why I bring in Dave to talk about what he has going on, not only from your, um, your, your personal attor attorney injury, I mean, your personal injury attorney firm, but you also when it comes to the cases that you're helping. And I want to remind people what you've done for people when it comes to some of these, what I guess we would say, and I don't know if this is a, a raw way of saying it, but conservative issues, because we don't see attorneys that often come out and be willing to say, okay, here's who I am and here's how I can help you. So I want to make sure you could explain to people what you're doing. Yeah, that's been a passion project of mine. So I, I don't know that many people know or not, but a lot of lawyers are liberal. They are. Um, very smart, um, very educated, but they're very liberal, unfortunately. And it doesn't them. mean they're bad people. 
Kind of does. Kind of does. I was trying to be nice. Okay, I'm out of here. Yeah, Yeah. bring your little prickly self back (laughs) and admit it. (laughs) So what you see is there's there's a handful of conservative attorneys, but they tend to be transactional, right? I am one of the few, in my opinion, conservative super lawyers, right? Litigators that will champion conservative issues mm-hmm. publicly. You don't, you get a lot of lawyers shine away. We saw it during COVID, right? I've, yeah. I've been in here and talked about before all these employment lawyers. I was begging somebody in the employment law field to help my clients and my people fight the COVID vaccine requirement. None of them would do it. And they'd always say, you know what, Dave, that's wrong. They should be getting this. They should be getting this thing. That's not your job as a lawyer, mm-hmm. right? So we need conservative super lawyers that is the that is the void I'm filling in. I'm telling you what, I'm coming. I'm coming every time I sued Sam Page during COVID for closing down churches, right? Love it. He changed his order. Good. Now I'm suing him about oh, this. That's I, right. He did change his order. Yeah. He changed his oh, order. No which wonder made he my... went running yesterday. He's like, oh, shit. Here he is again, David <laughs> Gregory. Oh, well, here he back. is. He's opening Home Depots, but churches, you're closed. Excuse me? That makes no what? sense. What? Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. Well, didn't he have... Well, he had bars and strip clubs open too, didn't he? Are there strip clubs in St. Louis County? I don't, I don't even know. think there are. If there are, okay. I don't know. Maybe that was no. just, okay, I got you. I just, just roll with it. It sounds better. You yeah, know it sounds mean? good. Just say it. <laughs> so you've had super success too. I mean, weren't you undefeated for a while representing clients in certain areas? Um, you know, I, it's hard. It's hard to say undefeated just because how do you define a win? Sometimes yeah, even if you that's true. lose on the merits, but your client wants to settle and be done, right? That could be considered a win. I, I don't like to talk about saying I've never lost or, or I'm undefeated. What I like to say is I'm super aggressive. Uh, and that's starting to become a lost art too. So many mm-hmm. people are too busy. They're not willing to be thorough. They're not willing to be aggressive. We have a multi-level system of aggression and I'm the final white glove. So not only do I dictate the strategy, but uh, I, I control the steps every step of the way. And then at the end, I do the final white glove review for our teams. And that that's, Vic, what you experienced. You didn't even know what's going on most of the, you know, the year long no. representation. But every month we're reviewing every single case, making sure we dominate. So that is uh, that's something I bring to my personal injury clients as well as my uh, my conservative clients. What I love that you've done and what I got, I got so much uh, time with you. Now, I know it's impossible for all the time to give somebody all the time. Cause there were some also sometimes where I'm like, I'm asking questions and you're like, Vic, I've got it. <laughs> Vic, relax. That's, that's true. Vic, I've got it. And you're taking care of it. So, but I still at the same point only were asking those questions because you gave me so much access as it was. And yeah. that's the one thing that I love because I know that there can be quote, super attorneys where you're not with the super attorney. Yeah. You're with the super attorney staff. Am I wrong in saying that? No, that's right. And there's nothing wrong with, uh, with, with big attorneys having support teams, right? I'm, I'm, you know, policy, uh, personnel is policy, so to speak. Like Reagan always said, you, you know, you're only as good as the team you surround yourself with. And I surround myself with an outstanding team, but where it starts to get lost is you'll see a lot of, a lot of lawyers start to kind of move away and just have their staff doing it. And I can't do that. I'm too much of a, I'm, I'm too much of a perfectionist to uh to allow for that so so i'm hands-on every step of the way and so the the specific cases you deal with personal injury when it comes to car crashes yeah i mean crashes, i'm an injury lawyer comp. yep i'm an injury lawyer so if you're injured in a car accident is the most common but there's other types of injuries right there's financial injuries i used to be an auditor i do a lot of financial uh investigations and so i've had a lot of law, uh, fraud lawsuits i've sued for fraud uh when we found fraud going on in financial investigations so you can be financially injured um, emotionally injured, right? There's all kinds of other ways you can be politically or reputationally injured, right? In this situation, I'm suing Sam Page. You've been injured monetarily, right? It's not necessarily a car accident. So pretty much anything injured, if you've been injured or harmed uh, in any way, that is what I Boy, do. I wish I knew you 15 years ago. Oh my when, God. Uh, That's all right. Yeah. When yeah. I, when I, when I had a stroke by a chiropractor, oh. I would have loved to have called you back. I then. would have loved for you to call me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dave, Hey, how do people, uh, get in contact with you? And when, when you do let them know that you heard Dave here, because not only does that help Dave when you call them, um, it helps us with cancel the show.com and we'll have more about, uh, the partnership that we have coming up, but let people know the best way to reach out to you guys. We have Gregory from Missouri, uh, com running now, but I'm assuming there's another website or number that people can call to get in contact with you guys. You know what there is, but uh, but my campaign website actually has my personal cell phone number. So okay. I'd encourage them to reach out. Gregory cell phone number. Gregory for Missouri. Okay. Com. You can find my personal cell phone number. Call me. Call my personal cell. I rarely am able to answer, uh, but I will always return the call. Yeah, you've always gotten back to me. And once again, let them know that you heard 
about everything that he does and that you've seen him here on cancel this. And that's why you were giving him a call. That's how he can help too. And of course, if anything works out, it helps out cancel the show.com from that standpoint as well. Uh, if you don't mind, I, can we ask you about the Trump case that's going on? Sure. I, mean, I, 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 I don't I know if I'll know things. everything. No, but I, I just studied it, but go ahead. Okay. He's literally in New York being told you have to be here for every day of a six to eight week trial on what I consider to be trumped up charges. When you look at everything, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a joke. It's fake. And then you have a judge tell him, sorry, you can't even go to your son's graduation. That it would mean that you couldn't go to this came out yesterday. You can't miss a day or else you'll be arrested. Wow. So he'd eight. find him in contempt, essentially. Correct. That's right. So it's a court order that he's physically present mm -hmm. for six to eight straight weeks Correct. in trial yes. every day. Yes. Wow. I haven't seen it. I have not seen a judge order my client be present uh, if my client chooses not to. Generally, generally, it's not helpful to the case. You want to be present. You want to show the jury uh, the finer fact that you care, that you're genuine, that you're there. But I have never seen a judge order that. I think if New York's similar to Missouri, I would think the judge has the discretion to order it if they have cause to do it, fair cause. I don't even know what that fair cause would be. But honestly, it's just this is so typical. And I think the more they abuse him, the better for us. Guys, I'm telling you, the more they attack him so unfairly like this, the better for us. The more he's going to win, the bigger his win's going to be in November. I say, go ahead, take your chance, attack away. He's going to win, and when he does, it's going to be glorious. Yeah. Well, it would be. That makes me feel good the way that you say it. It came off your <laughs> it came off your tongue and lips very nice, Dave. Oh, well, thank I, like, you. I like I, hearing that. I'm just like, are you kidding me? Six to eight effing weeks of this BS on a fake trial with this judge whose daughter is making money as a person who has a company that works with Democrat leaders. I'm like, but see, that's so beautiful for an appeal or a throw out. I mean, this is just beautiful. It, the more they treat him like this, the better for him. As long as he can go through it and deal with it. As long as he can get through it. But if he is not allowed to go to his son's graduation, I mean, that's, that's terrible. It awful? It's awful. I mean, and the other thing about it, the, and it's interesting because you know, the law and you're in court and you deal um, with district attorneys, the district attorney bragged there, believe it or not, Dave had a 50% right now, a 50% record, 50% of his cases are lowered to a misdemeanor, at least 50%. And for the first time ever, he has raised a misdemeanor <laughs> with this case to a felony. Of course. Of course. First time abuse ever. I, I hope he's thrown from the bench. This is all strong evidence. I, I well in New strong. York though, he wouldn't be able to be. They wouldn't throw him from a bench there. I mean, heck, I see our Missouri Supreme Court sometimes come down in some. I think Donald way. Trump should bring me on pro bono to look for a way to get that guy thrown out. What do you? Think? I would love to see <laughs> I that. Will find it. That's, That's right. right. You tell Donald Trump. Will you text him for me, Vic? Tell him <laughs> yeah, you got Vic's the on conservative it. Joe's on it right now. All right. <laughs> Damn. I know. I just, I appreciate you going with the flow on that. I know you could find something because uh -huh. you always do. <laughs> I would, I would dig if he, if he truly wanted to, I'm in. Um, Hey, seriously, before we let Dave go from that standpoint too, uh, Dave helped me big time. And a few years ago, and I, I hope I never get hit again by anybody. Cause I don't want to deal with that. I still have PTSD sometimes when I'm sitting in yeah, lines like, like when i'm on the highway mm -hmm. and you're like slowed up because you're maybe going to go off on a turn but cars are still going past you yeah on the highway dude i'm always like oh my god oh my god am i gonna get hit <laughs> yeah it's like i feel that anyway dave took care of me big time big time he's like vic i got it and he got it and he got it fast and he got it good and he got it right and then we got you more after that you did. <laughs> was I allowed to say that? Yes, I was. Yes. Thank yes. you for that. That's <laughs> good. You want to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. And I was uh, like, oh, Dave knows what the hell he's doing. So it's not just for you, but if your family, your friends, you know of anybody, before you do anything, um, just give Dave and his team a call. It's that simple and it's that easy. And of course, we'll have more of Dave coming up in the days and weeks to come. Anything else? The family doing well? Daughter doing well? Still sleeping? Outstanding. I got to uh, I, I got to hold her this morning, put her back to bed about 4 a.m. So she's doing great. She's perfect. She's perfect every morning uh, at 2.10 a.m. and 3.15 a.m. <laughs> and 4.20 a.m. It's oh. great. She is perfect at every one of those moments. Oh As she's God. waking you up all night, she's perfect. Uh, yeah, she's well, damn, perfect. you still look good. Oh, well, thank you. That, there you thank go. You, you don't yeah. look tired. That right. appreciate it. That helps. Uh, hey, keep us posted on anything else. Uh, we're also going to have Dave on when it comes to legal matters. Uh, if you have questions, let us know things that I can ask Dave. Obviously, when you call him, when you contact him, let him know that you heard him here on Cancel This. 
And the other thing I find interesting too, Dave, and I don't know if I'm off base in saying this, but if somebody has a question, because I've asked you before for several people, after I dealt with you and I spoke to people like, hey, Vic, hey, Vic, I, I'm getting asked about people in law all the time. Um, they should ask you, and if you can't do something, you can always recommend somebody. Yeah, see, that's what I tell all my friends and family. Look, I'm going to I'm gonna be pretty specific, okay? I'm going to stay focused on what I know I'm good at, and I'm going to stay in my lane. But what's unique uh, about you know thorough lawyers is that we know what other lawyers are good at what they do and which other ones aren't. So I can help you avoid those pitfalls. If it's not for me, I know the right person for you that I would send to my family and my friends. All right, ladies and gentlemen, David Gregory, attorney and also running for Missouri Senate, uh, gregoryformissouri.com, gregoryformissouri.com. And Dave, we appreciate your support and partnering uh, with Cancel This as well. Uh, tell Paige we said hello and uh, continued success and um, obviously get the word out about Dave for uh, State Senate. Uh, I, you, you're not going to find a better candidate anywhere. I mean, you're over. <laughs> I would say so. Dude, you're, you're so. overqualified for the position and we're grateful that you're running for it. Thank right. you guys. Thanks so much for having me. You got it. Have a great day. David Gregory. Love it when Dave shows up and talks to us and we can talk some law. That's great. John says that Dave would be a great source on the show. Yeah, that's why we're going to have that's why 100%. we're going to have Dave on when we can. He's going to be doing all of those things uh, coming up. Um, Margie says, come back, Dave, near August as well. Yeah, we're going to have Dave on. Dave will be a regular guest on the show. And I'm so glad to hear that because so many people think that all attorneys are slimy, especially oh Dave. <laughs> injury attorneys. Not even close. He is a wonderful human being. He's very smart. He's championing our causes. And anybody that goes after Sam Page is a complete badass. So, I mean, he's a great resource to know the law. It's actually, a lot of people say things that they want to do, but they don't know what the law is. And Dave does. Uh, he also loves your son-in-law, Justin Hicks, yeah, who is running for that seat in Congress as well. That's right. Another conservative attorney that want to do the right thing because a lot of people hate attorneys and I do understand that, but here's the deal. Oh yeah, that's right. Your nephew's an attorney as well. My nephew, uh -huh, my okay. nephew, my nephew. Yeah, everybody in my family's an attorney. But you know what? The thing that you have to do is you have to find an attorney for whatever that you want to do in life, write a will, whatever. But Dave was right. There, there's hardly no conservative attorneys. And if you have a conservative attorney on your side giving you information or defending you or protecting you or whatever it is, you're golden because so many people do not like attorneys and, and attorneys can be bad. But when you have a good constitutional, truthful attorney mm -hmm. that is going to run for something or they're going to protect you, that's what you want. And when I was trying to get the word out, Justin Hicks, by the way, he's a Missouri state representative. Um, he married Lizzie's beautiful daughter. He's running for the third con congressional district seat. That's the third congressional district seat. Uh, Blaine Luke DeMeyer um, is no longer. He's leaving. Correct. So that seat is up. And I could not imagine new blood better than Justin Hicks, um, who reminds me a lot of Dave. Uh, they remind me a lot of that. And it's probably why Dave has in. so much respect for Justin. And 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 Justin for Dave. And I'm too. not just saying that because he's your son-in-law. Well, well, you wouldn't say that it was just my son-in-law because when we first talked about him running, you're like, I don't know. I did. And then you did because it, because you're going to tell me the truth, because if you didn't think he was the best candidate, you would have said, this is not his time to run, no, he's one but he's over. backed by too many great constitutional conservatives. Not too. when I started to see the people he was backed by. Yes. And then I heard him talk and I was like, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. And now it's like, I don't know if there, there's really not a better choice. Are you allowed to say yet who's backing him or do we wait to do that? Well, we, we can say who's backing him. I mean, one of the biggest backers that he has is Bob Brinkman, who he owns the construction company, um, Brinkman Construction. Wonderful and, man. And, I've never met him at all. I've heard his wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. He man. is apparently one of the most wonderful, conservative, constitutional person, people. Construction men. Yes. And he wants things to be done for his district and for all of the state of Missouri and for all of the United States instead of people that go up there and just talk, 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 and don't really get anything done. And there's a lot of good Republicans that we all think we like, but when you really look at their record while they were in office, what did they really do? Did they ever really do anything? I mean, we know people that have that are running for governor that has never passed one bill. So they might say all the right things, but you have to look 
What have they really done? Not just talking, not just getting on Facebook and talking all the time. What are they really doing? Yeah, I can think of worse people to have back you than Bob Brinkman. Yeah, <laughs> somebody he's, he's said great. my sister works for Bob. And also, and at well, some point in time, I'd like you to tell a story when it's right. Some big name conservatives who said, Justin, we need you to run. That's right. I, we, we, yes. we need you. And yes, a lot of the people that everybody would like here, um, they want him to run because they want somebody to get something done. I'm not saying that they did or they didn't like Blaine, but we all know a lot of people thought he should have done more. So that's what they want this time is somebody that's going to do something and not just go up there and stay up there for 3,700 years <laughs> and do the right thing. I mean, my son-in-law even believes in term limits. And even if that means he's termed. Hello. Up, Yep. Term limit. Yep. He if, believes in term limits. That's a good starting so, point right there. Yeah. I mean, he believes that there's a time and a place even for him to be able to do this. And so, um, and you have to see, you have to look at people's records. What did they really do? What did they really do? Look, look at David Gregory. What did he really do when he was a state rep? Look at Justin Hicks. What did he really do mm -hmm. as a freshman and a sophomore? Then you can look at other people that are running and they say glorious, wonderful things. And they're a one trick pony. They've done one thing or none at all. Um, and we are, are grateful for everybody coming in. This is Cancel This, canceltheshow.com. Once again, canceltheshow.com. We're here Monday through Friday, 8 to 10 a.m. Central, all the time on our website. Canceltheshow.com. Vic Faust, Lizzie Sparks, Projo in the house. Projo, you can always pop yourself up and let people see, you, even if you're not saying anything. That's cool. And, of course, we love your, uh, uh, your stories, guys. We love your information. We love everything that you're bringing to the show. By the way, Megan is going to be in with you the next two days. Yes. I'm going to be off doing the other job for the next two days. And um, I know that you guys do a phenomenal job. Well, Megan is great. Together. She really is. And, She's great. And we have another guy uh, who's running for office tomorrow, um, Will Sharf. Will Sharf yeah. is going to join the show. Will has been in New York. He's part of Trump's legal team, believe it or not. Right now, he did an interview with Fox News Sunday explaining some of the details of what's happening with this. I hate saying the word, the, 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 the fake hush money case. Yes. I guess that's how I'll refer to it as and mm -hmm. trying to pick a jury. So Will is running for attorney general. I love Will. I wish he wasn't running right now, or maybe he can run again if it doesn't go for him, but he's running against um, Andrew Bailey right now. Who's super, he's doing very good. And Will is a friend of mine as well, but Will is running for that position right now. And who knows, maybe he'll pull off an upset. But the bottom line is he is a staunch conservative. He understands the Constitution. You'll get to learn a little bit more about Will tomorrow and then make up your own mind. Yeah, I'm looking forward to meeting him. I've heard mm. so many good hey, things about no, him. He's a brilliant attorney. Yeah, brilliant I've heard wonderful things attorney. about Will. And you have to be a brilliant constitutional attorney if Donald Trump is going to have you on his team. Yeah and have you in New York <laughs> and have you there doing interviews on Fox News. So he did Fox News Sunday. He does cancel this on Wednesday. So you guys will have that tomorrow in the eight o'clock hour. We're still figuring out and finalizing a time where we can make that happen. But we well. know it's, we think it's in the first hour. So um, I forgot about this already uh, from the chat line. It's for people throughout the St. Louis metropolitan area, even though we're a national show. Um, you guys going to Westport Thursday for PRL, the kickoff of, I guess, what did he say? Their green area, the green district? Yeah, they're they're kicking off at Westport. They used to have it and now they're kicking up. It's, it's kind of like their party in the park. I mean, that's not what the name of it is, but it's early. So it's like from 4.30 to 7.30, I believe, is the time. I thought it was later, but I guess it's a Thursday night. And so any of you guys that love Eric. 4.30 to 7.30 Thursday, Westport Plaza for correct. people throughout the St. Louis metropolitan area. There mm -hmm. you go. Somebody just brought that into the chat line. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, and I was trying to get that. Also, updates. Michelle says, my husband notices military helicopters over Baldwin, Ellisville, and Manchester the past few days. I have no idea what that's about, but of course, we love it when you guys chat us up. We bring it out. We take it to the people as best as we can. That's why our live chat on the podcast is as best as it can possibly be. By the way, X, Rumble, Facebook, YouTube, Cloud Hub, all platforms that you can watch us live on. And of course, it gets saved there as well as soon as the show ends. And then, of course, we're also on audio platforms as well throughout all of your regular audio channels, including Apple, Spotify, and Google. So we appreciate that. We do love it when you like, subscribe, share the show. Uh, if you can donate anything on the website, we're grateful for that. Anything helps. Also, um, you can check out our merchandise section, canceltheshow.com cancel the show.com. And then Friday, we have a really cool guest too. Um, Jeannie uh, Egnow is going to join us and she is an entrepreneur. She was uh, in the business, Kellogg business school at Northwestern. One of the nice. most intelligent people I've ever met. So 
she's got what she does is she is killing it nationwide. She goes into a this is her new book and we'll talk about it. She helps businesses who are already in play make more money and say, oh, this is how we do it. And it's how to reinvent yourself while you're still bringing in those same revenue streams, but also for individuals. And it applies to individuals in life. It's kind of going through life. And um, I, I, she doesn't get into politics, but let's just say she left uh, Northwestern University for a reason. Right. After, that says a lot, <laughs> doesn't it? Without saying anything at all. You, you'll see how sweet and super smart she is. Uh, Can't wait. Then the times. So she's coming up on Friday in the eight o'clock hour. So, of course, we got lots of people, lots of guests, lots of those situations coming up. Uh, and of course, we'll encourage questions all the time as well. All right. What else have we missed? Have we missed anything? I'm trying, I know. No, we I think we covered everything, even though we started late and bashed AT&T for about 35 hours. But <laughs> I, but I mean, it really worked out fine anyway. And if you want to go on. I Thursday, want Laura Loomer to Loomer AT&T oh, service. Oh, wouldn't that be great? That would be great. Shout out to Laura Loomer and the job that she's doing in New York as well as a correspondent. Shout out to her work yes. on X and everybody else who was doing some things. I didn't bring it up with Dave today, with Dave Gregory, mm -hmm. but I, I still want, that should be his motto. It's all right to ruffle a little feathers. Yeah. It's all right to ruffle some feathers. Sure is. Got to ruffle feathers. It's all right to ruffle some feathers. Kenny says, yeah, AT&T still sucks. They still we, do. If you were just joining the show, sorry. I mean, we do have a lot. The, the great thing about the show is we do have a lot of people who watch and listen, uh, either for the entire time or jump in and jump out or watch and listen to the majority of the two hours from mm -hmm. eight to 10 every day. And we're they grateful do. for that. Uh, you have been loomered. That's um, right. Yeah, at t said, oh yeah, yeah, your services. Are like what? So we're doing this last night. Then I'm told, oh, it's all right. Everything's fine. Literally check in. And then this morning we come in and it's still not ready. It's still not and ready. And then you talk to a yeah. service, a uh, call service center in- That Mum doesn't speak English? Mumbai. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then kept hollering at you and and then repeating themselves 47 times. Yeah, I'm glad you heard it because you I heard it. believed it if I said it. I heard it. Nope. She was yelling at you. Mm. I heard. I thought it was so weird. And kudos to Pro Joe because through all this adversity, he still gets us up, still shows the videos. I am so still makes the graphics. Yes, he did such a great job. And like my computers all were wonky. And even during the show, some people might have saw it, but he came in and fixed all my computers while the show was already going on. Kudos, Pro Joe. And by the way, the happy birthday graphic that you made for me yesterday got some uh, really nice play. It was awesome. Thanks. So I only posted that on social media so that people could see it. And I gave yeah. you the shout out, the thank yep, you for that. For sure. Appreciate that. Uh, guys, thanks for watching, listening. Monday through Friday, 8 to 10 a.m. Central, all the time on our website, canceltheshow.com. Check out Gregory from Missouri and .com. By the way, you get his phone number there. Uh, if you have any law case, let him know. He also told me that he would do a discount for people who give him a call and mention cancel this. I actually talked to him before he left. I've been having an issue with Progressive myself or a, another like AT&T type company myself. And I think uh, he's going to help me out. Yeah, he's uh, Dave gets things done. I'm telling you, he does. And uh, we appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome day. That does it for the fastest two hours in live podcasting. For Pro Joe and Lizzie Sparks, I'm Vic Faust. Guys, have an awesome day. That does it for this April 16th show. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.